So, got it. Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, we are excited tonight to be here with Avini Vibes Thursday night call. And um, we are recording. That's just a uh, information piece that you all need to be aware of. And we're thankful that we have some guests and some friends joining us. We have a great speaker tonight, some testimonials. Uh, we try to, we will, um, we don't try try to respect your time. We do respect your time and we'll get you off of here at right, right on time as well. Okay. Um, I did want to let you know that we do not make any medical claims at all. So with that said tonight, what we thought we'd do, we discuss, we're going to talk about some unity mushrooms and Chip Little John is going to share in a little bit, but we thought what we would do tonight is about two weeks ago, uh, we did a recording with our vice president, Doug Dickey, a uh, brilliant scientist, and he, um, it was actually two hours, but we're not going to play two hours worth. We're only going to play about four minutes. So without uh, any further ado, I'd like to do this recording. This was done with Dr. Susan Tannenbaum, a chiropractor. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Florida, and I'll go um, ahead do this recording, share. like I said, about, please. Okay. Thank you. Let me screen share. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. Okay, here we go. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to say this in a way that is correct. Uh, yeah. If somebody has a very irritated yeah. system, uh, autoimmune or, you know, whatever causes it, mm -hmm. it's going to be safe for them. Like if they start having runny bowels they can start bleeding they can have really severe problems so is right. this safe for someone like that to take is it going to help them and be safe yeah yeah it's safe completely um the of course i had serious serious bowel issues that are still healing right i've only been on the products for oh, less than three years um i started on just the cell defender and that helped change my uh, bowel makeup, if you will, where um, things were working really, really well. Um, when uh, most issues are caused by candida, mm -hmm. when we're talking the bowels, uh, they, they give off chemicals that make the body lower the pH. Um, they, um, they're, they hide everywhere. The, the candida cannot live if you're taking this. If you're taking this four or five or six times a day, just a drop or four or five, six times a day, that will help start changing the bowels in, in a couple weeks. I tell people to start with that. If you're taking the mushroom complex, this really, really helps. And in, in order, I would always start this, then have this with it, Nobody has any issues with this. There's no, there's no response with this. It's you just notice you don't have allergies and stuff. You're not having reactions to things. That's that's the thing that people notice. Even people that can't take mushrooms take this and they have no problem with it. It's because of the highly patented technology. Even though there's six of the same mushroom names that you see. It's, there's not a product anywhere like this. Rick had invented this for another company way back called Rexall. And they did uh, like $100 million in sales. It was phenomenal. But when they got purchased, they didn't buy the technology from Rick. And therefore, Rick had it to provide for us. But it is absolutely crucial. There's so much studies on this. In the back office, there's a 35-page breakdown. Our last... Um, newsletter i put 35 pages into three so people could hand out there in the last newsletter there it it talks about the mushrooms and the benefits and why i sort of distill everything down can you talk a little bit more about it because you just breeze through that product um yeah so so the reason why there's six different types of mushrooms um is each one has a different specialty in the body and so you and and bacteria figure out ways to get around it. And so having six of them 
using all three parts of the plant, using the right ratios of the plant, how it's processed, um, how it's grown. They're grown and competitive. Like they plant one mushroom next to another mushroom that don't like each other. So instead of weakening the plant through water or food or pH, they strengthen the plant by having them outcompete each other. And so their concentration is this massive number, a thousand times stronger. And, and one, three beta glucans is one of the most powerful uh, materials that you can take. Helps with heart circulation, attaches itself to bad guys in your body, showing the white blood cells where they are. Um, but the most important thing is this autoimmune canceling ability. And when you use all six, it's sort of attacking from all different angles and, and the, the um, uh, things in the body that are not happy, that are not good, uh, can't overcome it. And so they sort of surrender. Wonderful product. We also have lion's mane as a sort of a feel-good mushroom that's, that's in it too. Now, most mushroom capsules are 10% active product. Just cross the line. This is the way you do it. 100% active product. 100%. So it's 10 times more than you get in really any other product. Because again, our whole purpose of our company is to save lives, to really make a difference. Everything is... Everything has a purpose to be in. There's no token ingredients. And you can see that all the way from our trim science product all the way through. Um, so if you if you read through the, um, I can't really see it here, but uh, the promises that are made on the label, we have studies backing up each and every one at the ratios that are in here. So again, you only need a pill in the morning, a pill at night. Um, absolutely incredible. Lots and lots of results. And that's why we have the Avini Health Training. People can go and hear, uh, hear distributors or customers share their experience. And uh, they're powerful. When, when, you, when you get away from all the junk and you get to what does the work, the active ingredients. Um, and, and there's no better biochemist, in my opinion, than Rick out there, just his ability, you know, he remembers everything he's ever read and understood. And he can recall it at any point going back to when he was a kid. And so that, that understanding of both nutrition and pharmaceutical pathways and the whole mechanism, how the body functions at the incredible depth. And so anyways, that, that technology goes into the, the power of these products. Go ahead. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Carol. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, can you see my screen? Screen? Yes. Okay, so um, with that, I'd like to introduce Chip Littlejohn. Many of you know him, but I do know that we have some new people and guests on tonight. So Chip, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to be with us all the way from Western Nebraska, right? And I know you were gonna be on the lake tonight, but you chose to be with us. So thank you. And if you wouldn't mind just sharing, Chip, uh, your your story and your wisdom and knowledge. You're, you're still muted, Chip. We have to unmute you. There you go. Yeah, Thank you. I got this. Well, I am I am at the lake and I'm looking at a beautiful, beautiful scene right now. Um, and I, you know, I, I come to you excited about a bean. And I'm, I also come excited because I know you're excited. And uh, I was listening to you saying you've kind of getting the old gang back together and that a lot of you know each other and you know, kind of the same for me and some of the people that I've worked with over the years, including Kyle Helm. And, and I have to say, there was a point at which I thought maybe I'd never be in touch with them again. You know, I thought maybe that part of my life was gone. And I miss it. I like doing this. You know, this is an important thing to me. I, I love knowing the latest and greatest thing before everybody else knows it. And then being able to use it to get um, attributes of a younger uh, human. You know, I think probably most of you that are with mm -hmm. us tonight are, are 
you know, wanting attributes of a younger person. And so you just heard Doug Dickey. Um, Doug Dickey is our vice president um, of, of marketing or sales. Uh, he's out in the field a lot, um, goes around and, and, you know, meets with people live, puts on presentations. Um, he is an experienced uh, marketer. He started out with pesticides and came into the office one day and, you know, he, he was having bowel troubles like he just described to you. And, and when he started, you know, seeing a doctor, the doctor said, this doesn't look good. We might have to, you know, do a resection or something like that. And, you know, he, when he went into the office, the, the, uh, and mentioned it, some of the other people said, well, that's already happened to me. And I, I love what, what Doug says at that point. He said, apparently I have a superpower. Um, I, I could see a, a pattern and it was coming at me and I wanted to step out of, of it. And, and when he stepped out, one of the things that he found uh, was, was uh, nano silver to start with. And then that led him to us and Rick Deitch and Zeolite. And of course now ZM mushrooms to go with that and the plus fiber and the plus relief and, you know, the trim science and the plus energy and, you know, all of the um, wonderful things that we have here. I, I kind of describe our product line, uh, you know, Rick was, and, and I, I like I like the history. Um, I find that I use this a lot when I'm speaking to people to get credibility for, you know, who we are and where we come from. And, you know, our biochemist, Rick Deitch, I was trained at the Duke Cancer Research Institute, and he was working with two people that got Nobel Prizes for developing chemotherapies, Monroe Wall for Taxol, Gertrude Elion for Camptothecin. Uh, one of Rick's main jobs was to get Camptothecin to not hurt you as bad. Uh, it has a nasty habit to attach to circulating human albumin and plug up your kidneys and kill you, uh, which isn't a good attribute for a medicine. But interestingly enough, think about, you know, being a young person in a, in a uh, graduate program with two Nobel Prize winners in the department that you're trying to fix their product. Well, what's what wrong with their product? Product's risky. Product hurts you to help you. So what's going on in his mind? I'm supposed to make it so that it doesn't hurt you to help you. It actually helps you to help you. But if he starts going backwards and says, hey, I got a completely different idea, he runs into these giant personalities and these giant products that are making a fortune for the university. You, you kind of get the frustration. Do you get the feeling there? But his mind was already thinking, isn't there a way that I could help people to help them to get rid of the risk? And it just so happened he got married, had kids, needed money stepped out of his PhD program, got picked up by Rexall at the moment that Rexall was going natural. You know, it's always a retail drug chain. Where does Neil Roth come from? He comes from retail drug chains. He was multi-billion dollar executive, uh, took Rite Aid from the East Coast to the West Coast and then hooked it all together until it was a multi-billion dollar entity. And so that's why He's so capable of doing this to, to him, you know, Avini and the decisions he makes every day. He's, he's been there before. He's made these kinds of decisions of, of a much greater magnitude, but he knows what he's doing. Uh, you know, we've essentially replaced all the other bureaucracies above us, you know, with two guys, mostly Neil, but uh, kind of in the sidekick Robin or Tonto position, uh, Doug Dickey that runs around, does a lot of the legwork. But the uh, the two huge minds that we're really counting on and, and following are Neil Roth and Rick Deitch. So uh, Neil, where'd Neil come from? Neil was at West Point. He was studying uh, physics and mathematics. Well, what's a guy at West Point studying physics and mathematics going to be? They were preparing him to be an astronaut. Did you guys know that? Wow. That's that's where Neil was headed, and he he uh, uh, badly injured a knee. Um, by the way, I I come from uh, 
uh, Air Force ROTC, but I was a forward air controller. And at one point I got in the back of a C-130 with my little Jeep full of radios and headed up to West Point drop zone. And I was the guy on the radio talking to the cadets uh, airplanes when they were bringing them in for uh, some of their training uh, on on a on a jump there. So uh, I was part of the Air Force that interacted a lot with the Army. I don't know if you'd be interested in why that happened, but back in 1947, when they created the Air Force, um, the Air Force, uh, the guys like me used to be pathfinders. Uh, they would have been Army pathfinders, and but um, they they were in touch with the aircraft. But the Air Force wanted people to go through their schools to talk to their planes. And so that's that's what I was. That's what I learned to be was air traffic controller. But um, another cool detail about, you know, that Duke Cancer, in Duke Cancer Research Institute and Gertrude Elion, uh, not so much Rick in this case, but that program developed the anti-rejection drugs used for everyone who gets an organ transplant to this day. So. I'm just wanting to kind of give you an idea of the level of intellect that this is coming from. You know, this isn't a couple of, uh, you know, like me, I'm an old networker. You know, if I sat down with a couple of you guys at a coffee table and started writing on a napkin, okay, let's start a new company. Great. Okay. What are we going to have for a product? Oh, great. Well, where are we going to be? Well, great. Who's going to make it? Well, all that existed. That all existed and we, we knew it did. And we kept trying to find a home for it. But every bureaucracy we found turned out to be an anomaly or, a, you know, it, it was sick in some way or perverted in some way or, or didn't understand who we were and what we were trying to do. And we just, I mean, over the years, we talked for, you know, several times, uh, gee, you know, we need to take uh, Rick away from all this and, and make it so that, so that he has the freedom. To, to do what he wants. So, so what is a beanie beginning May 1st, a, a year ago? And, and it is essentially a collection of his most brilliant, safest, most efficacious ideas of a lifetime. And so that's what, you know, if you're on the phone tonight, that's what you've run into. One of the very top formulators in the world when it comes to natural products. And I call him an escaped biochemist or an escaped savant biochemist. What did he escape from? He escaped from the bureaucracy and the need to hurt people or risk something to help them. The products that you run into here are of such a nature, they're so safe, as Doug was explaining a little bit ago, they're so safe that they can be in my hands. You know, I'm, I'm an old special forces guy. I, I'm not the kind of guy, unless you were, you know, bleeding out on the battlefield, you'd want to come up to you and try to start patching you up. You know, if, if you have some, sophisticated uh, thing went wrong with you biologically, uh, you know, I wouldn't be your first guess, uh, but, but those guys, they would, you know, they're the ones that I, I, I really loved what, what uh, Doug said at the end there. He said, Rick doesn't just know this stuff. He knows it in depth. So if you ask me questions, I, I prepare myself in such a way that I think you could probably say, well, how can that be? And I would be able to tell you, and you could say, tell me more. And I would be able to tell you more. And you could probably do it three, four, five times with most of the things we work with. And I'd be able to add something uh, at that point. But, but Rick knows it in so much more depth. I mean, he really knows um, the history of every ingredient, where it comes from, how it's measured, the distinctions of it, what else is in the marketplace, um, you know, I, I'm essentially, I'm one of you. And, and I, I happen to be somebody that's known him for a long time. Um, I, I, when I first heard there was a Rick, I heard he was going to be speaking uh, in Colorado. So I went over there uh, and he was working in a booth with some people at a, at a, you know, a health deal. And he was one of the speakers. So I went and listened to him talk. And I just have listened to everything I could get my hands on that he did ever since and read everything that he writ, wrote, written that I could get my hands on. And so he said, I, I, I go to, uh, he goes, you know, he's a professor at the university level. Uh, he teaches doctors. Mm, I think you might enjoy this. I, I want you to have, 
you know, just things in your quiver that you can use in conversation. Where did Rick come from? Before that, you know, before Duke University, he's about five years old. His dad is in a dire health crisis and winds up in the hospital on a clinical trial in big trouble. Rick's a twin and quite a different guy than his twin, I think. Um, his twins finally come around to his way of thinking about natural health care after all these years. But, but Rick just, uh, there was a moment in time and his mom would go to the doctors and, you know, ask for details about what was going on with his sick dad. And they would kind of brush her off or give her some, you know, cursory answer. And one day the doctor was in there and in comes these two guys with long hair and blue jeans and white lab coats. And they called the doctor aside and started poking him in the chest and pointing at the clipboards and giving him what for. And uh, to Rick's childlike eyes, he saw the guy that was being impolite to his mom getting lectured by a couple other guys. And so, um, you know, he went over and, and you know, showed interest in them. Well, they went over with Rick and his mom and explained everything, explained the trial, explained what was going on with his dad and, you know, what they were looking for, what they were finding. And, and he was so taken with that moment. He said, I want to be like those guys. And that's, that's where, that's where it all starts right there. I, I, I love that story. You get a chance, get him to tell you that story. Um, that's where the guy comes from. And so from five years on, he was going to be one of those people in jeans and a white lab coat that, that really knew what was going on. Wasn't, wasn't just skimming over the top. And so, um, maybe an interesting way to approach the call tonight, but to me, those are, those are great things of value. They give me confidence in being me and bringing something to you where I can tell you, okay, this is something you can hang your hat on. You can bet your health on, you can go to work and create an income and a business that is lasting and has a very big, bright future. Uh, I hope you get that feeling from it. Well, I certainly get that feeling from it. And I not only, you know, my own personal experience with it um, is amazing because, you know, I know many of you on the call, but um, I had a new experience this week where I woke up a week ago and I literally, I couldn't move my head at all. I couldn't turn. I couldn't do anything. I was, I literally, I think I told Gerson this story the other day or today. Um, so, you know, we have other products besides the Zoomunity. But I had a great experience using the Plus Relief this week to help me. And you can't see in the background, but my son's behind me because we made this beautiful backdrop now uh, for the calls. But uh, he wound up going to the ER yesterday for an x-ray on, on, on his this part of his body. And right away, we put that uh, same, same Plus Relief on him prior to and, and after and through the last few days. So I'm just so thrilled with my own personal experience, how they have had, this has all helped me. So I'm, I'm grateful that Rick and Chip and, and Doug, you know, all of you, and Neil, uh, you know, have come together to, to bring this to us so that we can be a part of this. I see that we have a couple of guests, so we're grateful for you guests to come on and uh, and learn and learn with us because we're all learning together. Chip's been doing this a while, and his wife Marcy. You, as you get to know more things, oops, that was my knee. As you get to do know more, uh, you know about the company and the people, we'll get an opportunity to meet Marcy. I had a chance to interview her a couple of weeks ago. With a with a um, twelve time author as well, and the two of them, two brilliant women that know this like inside and out, and uh, so we just have so many superstar people that are just passionate about um, about helping others, and that's what I love about it. Alan, did you want to share something tonight well, with us? Or Chip, go ahead, and then Alan, Alan, I know in a little bit is going to share something with us too, I believe. 
Go ahead, Chip. Well, no, I'm I'm thrilled to hear from you guys, and I just want you to be comfortable. Um, my, <laughs> the line is, uh, you're welcome to ask me anything in front of anybody. All right, so unmute your phones. Alan, you want to go ahead and ask your question or tell you your experience? Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay, great. I got gotcha. you. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Yesterday was an eventful day in our lives. I, uh, I had to take Barbara by appointment to see her nephrologist. Barbara has been stricken with lots of uh, various and sundry problems over her medical life in the, in the last number of years. And Barbara's trained as a nurse and she worked as a nurse for a number of years. <clears throat> so when the doctor walked in the door, he's a young guy. He, he's uh, very smart, very cool. And he had a big smile on his face, and he verbally compared the numbers from this week uh, with the ones from a few months ago when she saw him last. <clears throat> so after covering the numbers, expression, expressing his pleasure <clears throat> with uh, with those, uh, he said, with the you know all of her numbers were in line with where they were supposed to be where before they were erratic. He said, what changed since the last time I saw you? And he was asking my wife, Barbara, and she said she did not know she had done nothing that she knew of. Uh, he said something had to have changed because this is a dramatic reversal of all of these numbers. And that's when I spoke up. I said, well, I take care of her. We've been married for plus 54 years. <clears throat> and I said, so, and since I've retired, it's my responsibility and privilege to, to take care of all of her, everything about her, her food and everything else. <clears throat> and so I said, a few months ago, we started on the Vini Health products. And I said, that's the only change that's been made in her diet or otherwise. And he said, so what's in these products that has caused such a dramatic change? My response to him was, the most important component is zeolite. Then I asked him, I said, do you know anything about zeolite? He kind of slowly nodded his head a tiny bit. Then he said, what do you think zeolite is and what it does? I stated the most simple explanation that I can give uh, is that zeolite is basically volcanic rock that's been processed to microscopic levels by Zeni Health. And by nature, it's positively charged. <clears throat> As it goes through the various organs of our body, it attaches itself <clears throat> to the negatively, negatively charged product particles, and it removes them through our body's natural and normal functions. That leaves only healthy tissue behind to begin the recovery process. And then I further explained <clears throat> to him that I've been taking care of her specifically for the last three years for her, of her life because of her significant decline in health. <clears throat> And I uh, said, so that's the only change recently that's happened in her life has been the addition of the Avena Health products. He simply nodded his head a little bit and uh, said, you should continue with, it, with what's working for her. <clears throat> with those thoughts in mind, uh, I would tell everyone, give these products time to work. It's not an over the, overnight process. Uh, it takes a while to get the toxins out of your body because they didn't get in there overnight, most of them. And uh, keeping these products in our system will help our <clears throat> us to become more healthy, uh, as healthy as these products can make us. And that's basically what I have to say about that. Thank you, Alan. That's amazing. Because I've only known you and your wife uh, since probably January or February. And I know uh, often when I... Eddie would say, oh, Alan's in the hospital with this again. And that happened quite frequently. So that's remarkable. I'm so glad to hear that about your wife and that she's doing well and that you, you're so well-versed. Good for you. Well, <laughs> I love it. You. you weren't 
talk to your physician. As Eddie always says, right? Uh, talk to them about zeolites because you know more than they do. <laughs> so there's, there you go. Congratulations, Alan, and say, send our love to your wife, okay? Thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah. You Does anybody want else want to speak? Kidneys for a few minutes? Go ahead. Okay. Well, um, since Alan brought it up, I thought maybe we could just talk kidneys for a minute. I mean, we can go anywhere, but um, that's a great direction. It's a very important direction. There's a lot to learn there. Uh, one of the first people that benefited kidney-wise from Rick's product would have been, I believe it was his father-in-law that would, had had a transplant, and the transplant was going bad, putting up bad numbers. And he was not a very good candidate to get another one. He would be older, have additional comorbid conditions, probably not qualify to get a new kidney again. And so um, this would have been back in probably 2005. Uh, Rick, you know, was now on the market with his micronized activated zeolite for the very first, you know, short time. And he, he said, you know, would you, would you, uh, cause I'm pretty sure it was his father-in-law, you know, would you take it and see what happens? Well, his numbers, as Alan just eloquently described, came back in line. And he was able to continue the rest of his life uh, on that original transplant. So I want you guys to think a little bit about um, that moment with, with mm -hmm. Alan and Barb and the nephrologist. Uh, is that a real, real rare, rare occurrence that the doctor said, okay, um, you know, congratulations, something's gone right, uh, you know, and I don't see that very often, you know, and, th and then the next step is, is uh, you know, what did you do? And then keep doing it. The, the thing that I'm looking for, and that's, believe it or not, that's all really, really common. Uh, you know, I hear that all day, every day. The thing that I want to hear that I don't hear very often is the doc that looks Alan in the eye and says, Alan, you know, I don't get to see this. I need to know if this is reproducible. I would like to have this result for all my patients. What do I have to do to find out? That's, you know, to me, uh, a great education ought to lead you to that question in that situation. I think sometimes um, there's a, a short circuit and they're not allowed to, to go to that level. Um, there are, uh, you know, gave Alan back the freedom to continue taking care of his wife, but didn't go to the big ticket. So I'm going to ask you, do you think that this, uh, idea of, you know, these ideas that you're experiencing with Avini, are they going to come to you from inside of a big institution? Or is it going to be us on the outside that come up over the walls from the outside and in? It's going to be the second thing, you know, that this is, a, these are tools that uh, are being developed outside of the institution. And, you know, there'll be a day when they say, oh, yeah, we always knew that. But, but right now, it's, it's, you know, it's being discovered. Literally, literally, we're still in the product discovery phase. Like like Doug said, he's, he's had it for three years and his bowels are still clearing up. You know, we were uh, talking to Carol right before the recording started and she had started taking nano and it caused a, a, a remarkable mucus event, which is predictable with that. And she said it's been going on for two and a half weeks. And so we talked about, okay, well, let's get that over with and go on to the clear air. You know, let's get into what you really wanted, which is the clear air. But um, I want to do one more thing while we're on kidneys. Um, maybe a couple more things. When the uh, zeolite's in your body and it picks up the poisons, remember the zeolite is a positively charged sponge. I'm sorry, it's a negatively charged sponge. <laughs> now I got myself going backwards. It's a negatively charged sponge. It's negatively charged because around each silica, and there's also aluminum in the cage, around each of those uh, ions, there's going to be oxygens. And the oxygens each carry a negative two charge. That's where the negative charge in the cage is created, through the oxygens in the cage. 
And that's how it's able to steal the poisons from us that are densely positively charged. Now, those two things are held together. Remember, it attracts, traps, transports, and safely facilitates excretion through the kidneys of those poisons. It is not more difficult for the kidney. It's easier for the kidney to do what it could not do before, maybe couldn't even get access to those things to sort them out. Kidney sorts by um, size, shape, and charge. And um, that's how it, the, you know, nephrons, why is he called a nephrologist? Because the smallest component of a kidney is a nephron. It's like the alve alveoli or the smallest little bubbles in your lungs. And, but, and so, but strangely enough, to, a lung doctor is called a pulmonologist instead of an alveologist. But in, in the kidney, the smallest component is a nephron. And the nephron is, is the itty bittiest little filter there. And essentially, um, micronized activated zeolite, a veiny cellular defender, is an assistant to the kidney. Marcy sometimes says it's like swallowing, you know, millions of tiny little kidney helpers. And so I, I want you to think about something in case you're a person who's been around uh, people with kidney troubles before. Uh, maybe, maybe I could just ask from a show of hands, are there people who have been around someone who has had to use dialysis? Is there anybody in the group? I don't see anybody. Well, there's one. Okay, well, two, Alan, three, Christine. Okay, so I'm going to tell you, this is really, really helps helps to understand, I think. Um, I had a buddy and he had a descending aortal aneurysm. And then when they got in there to try to fix it, it was attached to the bowel. So he, they had the blood shut off to his legs and his kidneys for a long time and lost uh, toes. And then the kidneys shut down. And so he wound up going to uh, dialysis. And we, we did eventually get one of his kidneys to start back up. One in 30,000 after that long starts back up and we were able to get him going again. But when you sit down and they hook up to the vein in your arm and they send your blood over to the dialysis machine, it comes back in a very few minutes clean. My question to you guys that have been around uh, kidney dialysis is, why does the person sit there for three and a half or four more hours? Why? Has anybody thought about that? The reason is, and, and this is going to be obvious to you when I tell you, you're just going to all smile and say, oh, yeah, I should have known that. The blood's clean, but it comes back into your body. Your tissues are all still dirty. They give more waste to your blood. It goes over and gets cleaned again there. I saw the expression on Carol's face. Oh, yeah, it's obvious once you once you get it right. So I, if you get the question in your mind, then you get the answer. And that's part of what we do. If we can get the question in people's minds and then give them a beanie as the answer, then we get that, oh, we're looking for it. You know, if you've got the question, you've been struggling with your healthcare, some unsolvable problem, and now all of a sudden somebody comes through and just thinks it through, well, guess what? The Avini Cell Defender works the same way. You take it, next time you pee, what you just took is leaving full of poison. You take the next one, it starts taking more out of your tissues, just like the dialysis machine did. Only it's a much longer period of time because you're taking out parts per million of these heavy metals that are sequestered in your brains, your bones, your organs, and your fat. And it takes a long time for them to give it up. You know, you create a concentration gradient and some of it moves and you can get at it again. But in some cases, you have to wait for that cell to be replaced. Now you get a chance if your cell defender's within you to clean up the mess that that cell left as it was being replaced. So the quickest versions of that are all the things that go, um, you know, replaced quickly, like your stomach lining, your immune cells, your reproductive cells, um, you know, hair follicles, all the things that get hurt when you take treatments for bad cells, those are quickly dividing cells. The things that are slower to be replaced are things like your spine. It may take you 10 or 12 years to totally replace your spine. The main thing that's sequestered in your bones is lead. So 10 or 12 years from now, you could have a brand new skeleton with all the old lead plus 10 or 12 more years of lead in it. Or 
you could have a brand new clean skeleton. You see the benefit of consistency over time. It's the best example. And, and I want you guys to just understand this stuff. I mean, you just, you just know it, you know, you know it so deeply. And I, I really respect Alan for, you know, um, speaking to the doc and, and, you know, offering that there was something different. And, and, you know, I believe that it's of great importance. I think that what we have is capable of changing the way that humans deal with their health concerns. I think that's why Avini is not just a bottle of this or a bottle of that for this problem or that problem, not that that isn't important, but for you to have a massive diamond business, you have to be after something bigger than one person at a time fixing a problem with a bottle. You have to be out there revising, correcting. You're, you're straightening out a known misconception about the health, how people deal with their health. The very first thing is get clean, go through a deep cleaning. Then there just wasn't a way to do it before. It's not that no one thought of it. It's just that no one figured out how to do it or was willing to put in the effort to create the products that we have. You know, these were years in development before Rick came to market and now years trying to find a company that was decent. And then finally then having to create a company that was capable of attracting people smart enough to market this product. And that's who you are, by the way. Thank you, thank Jim. You that. Let's just talk thank about you. kidneys. Yeah, thank you for that. That's well understood. Super. I love it. You know, I just want you guys to really, really intimately understand what you've got and be so, so confident. You know, you can't hurt anybody. And there pre really isn't something that you, you know, everybody's going to get better. If somebody has a crazy genetic anomaly, they're, they're missing a gene or something, you know, that's probably not fixable. Maybe the gene expressions can be a little different, but let's just say it's a kid that's, uh, you know, maybe Down syndrome or something. Well, that kid has all the same problems we do. He's just alive in a little bit different way. He's still going to be a Downs kid, but he's going to be happier or sadder, or better digesting or worse, um, stronger, or weaker, more efficient, less efficient, um, easier to learn. You know, all you're going to have all the same things that we do. So no matter what the situation, and we can never go after one problem. We can't go in um, to Alan's wife, Barb, and just work on her kidney. Can't do it because we do the exact same thing that helps everything at once. You know, not just one thing, but one thing that changes everything and everything starts going right at once. That's what's cool about it. Chip, let me ask you. You never know what's going to go right next. Here's another question yeah, for you. Challenge. Would would this also be true yeah. for those who are alcoholics? Um, we have seen addiction of all sorts. And I think strangely enough, and this is just me, probably maybe I'm the only one that thinks this way, but I believe it's true. I think some people are almost have withdrawal symptoms as though they were quitting alcohol or drugs or smoking or something like that when you start taking the heavy metals away from them. A few people are so toxic that when you start taking it away, they think they feel worse before they feel better. But um, why is a person an alcoholic? They're wanting to fix something in their life. You know, nothing else has worked and they finally settled on that crummy solution well, what if they find something where all of a sudden, instead of wondering what's going to go wrong next in their life that they have to self-medicate for, all of a sudden something starts going right and they can start you know, enjoying running clean. So how do I know this? Started out National Western Stock Show, Denver. Mars and I went and had a healthy booth there for, oh my goodness. Well, I guess 10 years in a row, uh, at that time, we were rec representing magnetic products to start with, and then we left that and we came, we're, we're looking for something else to represent. And that was when we very first had a hold of some of Rick's products. And the pro cowboys that we knew came down the aisle. And uh, they said, hey, we're trying to quit chewing. You got any ideas? 
we said, well, you know, here, we're try this. This is something mm -hmm. new we're working with. They came back later in the week and said, yeah, that helps. So, you know, they encouraged us and thus so that, encouraged, guess what the very next addiction phone call I got was? A mom from Hawaii whose daughter is in prison, pregnant, addicted to meth. That's, so I jumped from the pro cowboys chewing tobacco to the incarcerated pregnant mom addicted to meth. And the mom asked me, kind of like Alan just did, is there a chance this will help? And I told him the cowboy story. I said, you know, why not try it? Well, now we have that story. And of course, um, you know, the mother and the and uh, the daughter and then and then ultimately the child and the staff uh, got into it. And, and it was a controlled situation, of course. And the, the child was born not a meth baby. incredible absolutely incredible and so thus encouraged okay. now um you know just sticking with rick and it's been like that Question. ever since so i i hope that's an encouragement to you alan yes very encouraging thank you very much we want more oxygen in the, the, the way by the way the way alcohol works is it it uh, it rides the red blood cells and displaces oxygen and the things that you feel are because the brain isn't getting enough oxygen. Did you know that? that? That's how it works. And the reason it's useful as a recreational substance is that it clears over a period of a few hours and you kind of go back to normal, sort of. But I'll tell you what will scare the holy living out of you. Uh, as a high altitude parachutist, I went with all the air crews into a hyperbaric chamber, which means that you get multiple atmospheres of oxygen to help people heal things but for us they didn't do that instead they took the oxygen away and what we were supposed to do was to sit there and just sign our name over and over on a clipboard as they took the oxygen away and the person controlling the demonstration gave us the oxygen back when the last person quit writing and when you looked at the page, your signature got sloppier and sloppier and sloppier. And finally, your hand slid down the page and you quit writing. And when they gave it back to you, you went right back to writing as though nothing had ever gone wrong. If you wonder why people crash cars, as far as they know, they're doing great. But without oxygen in the brain, here's another interesting thing. When you take oxygen out of the brain, um, color vision goes to black and white. So colors dim. Oftentimes when people start using healthy products like this, one of their comments will be that they suddenly start dreaming in color. They're dreaming with oxygen in their brain like they couldn't deliver it before. When you start cleaning other things off the blood cells, uh, you are literally more alive in a beanie than you were before. I hope you can feel it. And if you're just considering joining Consider joining just to be more alive, but also considering help us, helping us represent these ideas. They are of great value to everyone. Thank you, Chip. That was so brilliant. I'm just giving you stories you can use, you know, use them. Use those stories. Wow. Absolutely. Well, I have to tell you, my nails are growing. I've never long, strong nails, and I have nails now, so I'm thrilled. <laughs> I don't have to go have and to get acrylic nails or anything. Stuff, you know? My nails are now hard. You <laughs> so, uh, Attributes of a younger woman. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Gerson, did you have a question? I exactly. I don't have a question. I didn't want to interrupt. It was very interesting. All the gentlemen had something very important to say, and um, so I am very interested in, I do have to get off the tonight, which I spoke to you about before 830. And uh, I'm lo looking forward to the next meeting, which may be in a week. I don't know exactly. Yeah, we do these every Thursday night. We have various guests. Chip, hopefully we get Chip to come on uh, as well. He joins us. Uh, so we love yep. having him. And we do have, um, in two weeks, we're going to do 
We're going to have Doug Dickey on, and he's going to be talking about um, kind of almost the side of what Chip was saying about the doctor's perspective, because we do have quite a few. I have three chiropractors and some other uh, physicians that um, mm -hmm. are in in the product. So we're going to address that on the 27th. But yes, we'll invite you to that. Uh, Waylon, did you have a question? Yes, yes I did. Uh, first, I want to apologize. Is attractive to very smart people. Yeah. <laughs> I just Go wanted ahead, to man. apologize for being late. Yeah. Uh, oh. the, reason, the reason why I was late, I was hooked up to the wrong uh, uh, voice. Uh, I mean, um, telephone oh. system. And, and that wouldn't work. So I didn't know that. It took me a while to figure that out. Uh, anyway, so I, you probably already. Waylon, have you gotten your product yet? Yes, I have. I've gotten the the uh, the uh, the liquid. Yeah, I've gotten the liquid. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I had I had two questions, and maybe you've already covered this, and maybe you don't have time. But anyway, two issues that I'm interested in is <clears throat> what would be the what would be the effect of your uh, on 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 a person's brain if they're if they're having trouble with let's just say um you know uh late uh or or some early early uh occurrences of loss of memory and that kind of thing uh and what how long would it take or is there any effect or how long if there is an effect how long would it take to be showing up in some form or another uh and is that something that's appropriate and the same kind of the same kind of question for persons that have diabetes because I have uh, I have uh, relatives that do have are almost diabetic, you know, so they 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 would get benefit from this product. But I'm just wondering if I could tell them how to how they would be benefited by it and and what to expect in both in both cases. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Um. Okay. So I love the brain one. Uh, very interesting. My very favorite direct visual evidence of all time is a five-minute video created by the dental profession because half of them argue with the other half about whether silver amalgam fillings that contain mercury are safe or not. Sadly, mercury volatilizes off and one of the main places it goes is into the brain and into the Krebs cycle, the energy producing part of the cells. In the brain, what mercury does, and remember our product increases the urinary excretion of heavy metals, including mercury. When you take a dropper full of that product, the next time you pee, you're peeing mercury that you couldn't get rid of before. And so how does mercury hurt the brain? The insulation on every single neurite which is the little tiny nerves reaching out from one cell body to another in the brain are insulated just like the wires in your house. The insulation on the tiny nerves in the brain is called tubulin. The insulation in the body nerves is called myelin. A lot of people know about diseases where the myelin sheath is attacked and scarred over and over again, right? Multiple scarring. Um, uh, but in the brain, it's called tubulin. And what happens in the presence of mercury is that mercury goes to the attaching point where the protein is put together with its next one. And it snaps together like little girl's pot beads. I think most of the people here are of an age that you'd understand how a little girl's pot beads work. I say that to young people. They got no idea what I just told them. But they just snap together, just pop, 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 pop. That's how the proteins go together. <laughs> And the attaching point is called the guanosine triphosphate attaching point. And instead of the next protein going there, a single ion of mercury goes there and occupies the attaching point. If you put mercury in the brain, which you can see in the video, um, it is in avinihealthtraining.com, but you can search on YouTube, five minute video, five minute and one second. You look for these three words, brain, neuron, mercury and it'll pop up there'll be a bunch of them it's very popular um very very interesting and you literally watch a healthy brain cell reaching out to its neighbors doing great and then they put a tiny bit of elemental mercury in the slide 
and it in, instantly dissolves the insulation on the nerve. And the little nerve tangles up and ties off short and the protein falls away and becomes a plaque. So now you have in the brain neural tangles and you have amyloid plaques and you have wormholes. Well, what is the nature of a brain that's experiencing the slow goodbye? Neural tangles, amyloid plaques, brain weight loss, wormholes. Early onset of that in children leads to behavioral problems. We have spectacular results restoring children to the proper developmental curve. I look at those two things as pretty much the same thing. You get the poison out of the way. Great thing about it, Waylon, is the nerves continually throughout your life reach out to make new contacts with their neighbors. Just like all of us are reaching out to each other to make new contacts with each other. Same exact kind of a process. We don't quit trying. And they don't quit trying either. And all of a sudden they're successful and they'll start coming back. Real quickly, and I'm gonna do this fast, the hierarchy of brain functions, when you start to hurt the brain, the very first things that are lost are inhibitions and judgment. That's why it feels like you're hanging out with a whole world full of people that are unintentionally intoxicated and inebriated, like their judgment and their wisdom isn't of access to them anymore because they're polluted. We are polluted in mass, cleaned up one at a time with a veni. The people are, it's like you're out in a world full of drunk people because they're, the, the toxins are treating them the same way as the alcohol would, only they don't go away. The next things that go are fine motor skills. That gets worse and worse and worse. The very last two things that the brain gives up are long-term memory. That's the answer to why, how can a memory so short go back so far? The brain easily gives up short-term memory, one of the first things it gives up, and it protects long-term memories. The very, very last thing a brain gives up is organ function. That's why you can have someone with a completely functional body, but their entire personality is gone. It's a cruel thing. It's the ultimate ending of the slow goodbye. So we don't want to go there, and with Avini, the risk is even reversing it is within reach. So I hope that's a great encouragement to you, Waylon. And you can yeah, do the is. same thing on the yeah. sugar thing. Um, first thing to do is quit eating sugar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it makes it a lot easier. If somebody has a terrible time, you know, you wake up in the morning, your sugar's way high and you didn't eat any last night. Why is that? It's because your liver prepares you for the next day by breaking down things in your blood to make the energy and it makes glucose for you. And that's why you have a, a, a spike in sugar in the morning. But I hate to say it, I'm one of the world's foremost experts on growing sugar. I was the University of Nebraska Farm Systems Specialist and uh, I've hauled thousands of loads to one of the biggest sugar factories in the world in my town. In that factory, they make the world's finest pure white, crystalline, drug quality sugar. One of the biggest employers in my town, the, the sugar factory and the hospital, two biggest employers, which is the most powerful? It's the sugar factory because it can fill lots of hospitals with patients. That's for sure. I'm just giving you guys stuff to think about. Yeah. That's, that's probably enough for tonight, isn't it? That was a lot of stuff. Thank you. Yeah, that was great. Good. That was great. And and Carol, we can go ahead and stop the recording. Okay. If you don't mind. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll yeah. Thank you everybody.